Hello, I'm Jay Reeves, Program Director of the Paramedic Program at Jefferson Community and Technical College. First, let me thank you for being willing to be a preceptor for our paramedic students in the spring of 2017. This presentation is an explanation of the expectations of clinical site preceptors and an overview of the clinical shift evaluation worksheet that students will present to you for their evaluation at the end of a clinical shift. Let's start by looking at the expected competencies for the students in each of the clinical areas for this semester. First, you should know that they have already done two clinical experiences, and these were in the emergency departments of two hospitals here in the Louisville area. They have met these competencies already and should be expected to be called upon to demonstrate these skills at your request. Now, obviously, when they first get to your units and on their first shift, they may want to hold back a little bit just as they get their feet underneath them. But know that the vast majority, in fact, eight out of 10 of the students in this group are practicing EMTs right now. So things like properly applying a 12 lead EKG or an EKG, is well within uh, things that they should be comfortable with, as is getting a, a, a capillary blood sample for blood glucose analysis. They have also been declared competent in safely obtaining intravenous and intraosseous vascular access. So if uh, a patient on the unit needs an IV started, uh, our students are capable of doing that. Now, we understand that, uh, especially in the critical care areas, these patients are potentially unstable, and you may not want a student to be practicing on the patient. But if you feel comfortable in asking them to start an IV, I feel confident that they'll, they'll feel comfortable in performing that skill. As far as safely performing skills consistent with the emergency medical technician scope of practice, these are basic life support skills. So if uh, a non-complex dressing needs to be changed, uh, my, the, the students should be able to do that sort of uh, procedure, obviously under your supervision. Um, CPR, bag valve mask ventilation, these are all things that they are certified to do by the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So let's move on to competencies for clinical experience three for this semester. First, we'll look at the operating room. In these slides, the uh, competencies that are highlighted in gold are the ones that are the focus in those areas. And as you can tell here in the operating room, we are pretty much focused on airway and uh, airway maintenance procedures and respiratory status monitoring. So if you have a student in the operating room, that would be, uh, these areas would be the ones that uh, we want to focus on. Now, know that the student should have this documentation on them. And if you would like to ask for a copy, they should be able to provide that for you. Uh, they are required to have at least one copy of the competencies on them at all times when they uh, arrive on shift. So they, I know they will have one, and of course a photocopy could be made at the clinical site. Let's move on to inpatient critical care areas. Uh, a few more focus areas here. Uh, generally what we want uh, the students to do in critical care areas is to perform assessments and history taking of patients with complex medical problems. So um, a little more focused here on interacting with the patient if possible, uh, observing uh, your uh, interactions with the patient in the critical care setting. Our students uh, need to be able to determine vital signs, including ABGs, but actually obtaining an ABG through an arterial, uh, arterial access is outside of their scope of practice. Uh, the focus is on understanding what the ABGs mean to the patient's overall physiology at the time. 
So we'll go ahead and give you a moment to look over that just a little bit further. And again, the students will have copies. Moving on to labor delivery, recovery, and postpartum. Uh, the focus in this area is observation, uh, much more uh, than it is any sorts of skills. Although again, you'll see here that it does say IV access. It's not a focus area. Uh, but if a patient needs an IV, um, a student should be able to do that for you. Um, and then obviously the rest is about uh, observation of a delivery in and of itself. Uh, as cesarean section is nowhere near the scope of practice of a paramedic, the focus is more on normal and abnormal vaginal deliveries. And then recognizing uh, recognizing imminent delivery, recognizing distress in a newborn, recognizing distress in a, uh, a peripartum mother. Uh, those are the focuses in, um, in labor delivery and uh, recovery and postpartum. Next, we move on to pediatric patient encounters. Um, the big thing in pediatrics is we want them to get used to interacting with children as patients. And then not only that, interacting with uh, caregivers such as parents or guardians when a child is ill. Uh, th th this is a very uh, stressful uh, patient population for paramedics and emergency medical technicians. We don't deal a lot with pediatric patients. And so the real focus in the pediatric encounters is more about just interacting with them, not so much the skills. Now, you'll see that there are skills here such as uh, IV access, administer medications, and uh, recognizing airway endangerment and taking action as necessary. But those are not the focuses or the fo foci, I guess it would be, of the pediatric patient encounters. And finally, we have uh, adult psychiatric. And here, of course, this is a, a unique patient population. So all of the competencies, uh, save measuring and recording vital signs, um, are foci in this uh, patient population. We're, um, we're expecting them more to understand a psychiatric professional's interactions with the patient how to ensure that a patient doesn't become agitated because of the encounter, or if they are agitated, how to diffuse the situation or how to distract the patient in some way so that they can safely interact with them. The student is going to provide you with a handout that's going to show you how to uh, evaluate them utilizing the form we're about to use. Uh, there's a short uh, essay on what it is our expectations are during the clinical shift. This is something that will be presented to you at every shift unless the student already knows you and we already have your signature on this form, which is a receipt of the preceptor uh, expectations. And again, this is a, a one page, a little bit more than one page uh, essay that just demonstrates what it is our objectives are for this clinical rotation. Okay, so let's look at their evaluation. This is the clinical shift evaluation worksheet. The students are very familiar with this worksheet. So this shouldn't be something that they come at you and go, I don't know what they're supposed to what you're supposed to do with this. They know. Uh, they've used this already for two clinical rotations and are very familiar with it. But I want to at least give you an overview of it uh, step by step through the uh, through the form and through the process. So first we'll look at, in specifics, the basically the demographic information that goes across the top. The student should fill this out on their own. If they have multiple pre preceptors on a single shift, each preceptor should be given an individual form. Um, that may not happen, but I'll try to emphasize that it should. You'll see going, uh, actually I can focus in, uh, here we're going to go to the left towards where it says uh, the number one on the left. And you'll see that patient age and uh, gender are uh, go in the uh, left hand, the far left column, then the impression and differential diagnoses, 
level of consciousness, complaints, events, and circumstances, um, a summary of treatments rendered successfully by the student. Generally what they've been doing is they've been making them in bullet points. Remember that our focus here is on skills, not so much on treatment modalities. So if they start an IV, you'll see them make a little dash and they'll say IV, or if they attach an EKG, EKG, or if they interpret an EKG, they'll say interpret EKG. So uh, that's, that's what we expect. Uh, in each one of the clinical rotations, once they get past their first shift, they get their feet underneath them. We want them to see uh, about three patients in the critical care area where they do something of a detailed assessment in a 12-hour shift. Uh, in the OR, obviously, it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis, but the focus there is on airway procedures rather than on assessment. So the, the, the overall, what, what, what you're going to see on this may vary from student to student, but obviously they'll be able to explain what they're doing there. Uh, going over to the right side of the form, these are the areas where uh, it's important for you to provide feedback. Uh, it's, and I know this isn't perfectly clear, but the clinical objectives go from left to right there, and then you have an area to provide comments and to develop an immediate plan for improvement in the next contact that the student has. So now I'm going to show you the whole thing all the way across. And here it is, and this is a little clearer, although it's small. In that clinical objective areas where it says S, on, and here I can bring up a cursor here, where it says S, that means they're, they are evaluating themselves on a 0, 1, 2 scale. And the P means preceptor. And I, lost my, I lost my thing. There it is. And the P means preceptor. So this is where you will provide your rating, and then you'll provide your initials here. As far as the patient contact type is concerned, ALS means advanced life support. If the patient has an IV, they're an advanced life support patient. If they don't have an IV, they could be BLS or a BLS encounter if no advanced life support invasive procedures were performed. On the back of the form, there's more of an explanation, especially in the clinical objectives area. The clinical objectives include a patient interview and history gathering, physical exam, impression and treatment plan, skills performance, communication, and then the professional behavior objectives. And this is our affective domain. This is new to us uh, in, it, well, not completely new to us in emergency medical services initial training, but we're focusing more and more on that. We know we can teach a person to perform procedures. There has been a recognition of a deficiency in our ability to be empathetic towards our patients. Uh, remember that our practice is wholly within the emergency realm, so it's pretty much uh, things that must be done in order to save lives a lot of the time. But about 80% of our patient contacts are in a non-emergency situation, and we're finding a deficiency in initially trained personnel in being empathetic towards their patients and, quite frankly, just being polite uh, at times. So we are now focusing in on that, and we'd really appreciate your help and feedback on that. The team member objective, you can read this on a form when they provide it to you. In these clinical rotations, our students are not expected to take the role of team leader. Team leader is something that is reserved for their capstone uh, uh, rotations that are in the field with a paramedic preceptor. So uh, at this point, you wouldn't expect them to take the lead in any situation, um, although you might find that they do begin to take the initiative once they become comfortable in a particular area. Well, I promise this would be about 15 minutes, and I'm right at it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to call me Jay Reeves. Paramedic Program Director. My telephone number is on the Expectations of Clinical Preceptors form that will be provided to you. Thank you for your attention.